This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Hey you, my name is Thomas Tomskar Ridgewell and today I thought I would tell you a story. I thought I would tell you of the triumphs and tragedies, the life and death of the world's most famous muffin. And I'm not sure if I can actually claim that title, if Mr. Muffin is the world's most famous muffin, but you know, I assume he's in the top five. Can you name me another famous muffin off the top of your head? I can't. The Muffin Man doesn't count. He's not a muffin, he's a man. Mr. Muffin is the face and recurring gag of Ast of Movie 7. He makes an appearance in Ast of Movie 8. He has been the star of a song that has generated over 200 million views on YouTube and gone gold in the music charts and also he's the face of a card game that raised over a million pounds on kickstarter so all in all he's been around and i wanted to tell you just how that happened i guess where he came from um and where did he go and where did he come from cotton eye joe it's impossible to label one specific point of origin for mr muffin because he is the result of a culmination of factors and i'm going to explain those first of all let's get the fun one out of the way shall we the year is 2013 specifically the latter half of it and i've just been diagnosed with severe depression largely in part because of my experiences with suicidal ideation now suicidal ideation is not suicidal intent at least not in my case. For me, it was an obsession with suicide, thinking about it constantly, talking to myself very unkindly in that manner, but never in a way that felt like it was going to really lead to action, I guess. It was just constant, constant thoughts. So that's in my head. Next, we have the relatively new at the time show Bravest Warriors from Frederator, featuring an adorably voiced character called Catbug. I'm Catbug! And finally, we have the comedic and artistic concepts of Subversion of Expectation, delivering the unexpected, and Juxtaposition, a stark and harsh contrast. And when you put all these things together, my brain essentially did this. Wow, that is a very cute voice. You know what would be funny and unexpected? If that very cute voice were saying something incredibly dark. What's something incredibly dark it could say? How about these thoughts that are in my head? Those are pretty fucked up. Yes, suicide. It wants to die. That would be very strongly juxtaposed to its cuteness. But what would it look like? Muffins are pretty cute, and I guess if a muffin wanted to die, that would be getting eaten. And congratulations, you have created a suicidal muffin character. This is how most Ast of Movie jokes are written, basically. So now that I knew what I wanted this joke to essentially be, and who this character was, they needed a voice. And obviously I can't get the voice from just the cartoon I'm watching. That's not really how reality works. So I drew a comic featuring the character, and I took it to Twitter. And I basically said, hey, do you have a young relative and a good microphone? Would you like to have them do these voices and be in Astaf movie? Give it a shot, send it over, and if I like it, I'll be in touch. And a lot of these voices just kind of... Yeah, they weren't great, and that's not one of the original recordings, that's my godson, I wouldn't put someone on blast like that, but you get the basic idea, I was feeling pretty demoralized. And that's when, all of a sudden, I got an email from the folks at Frederator, who I had met at a convention a few months earlier, and they said... <laughs> We saw your tweet. How about you get the real cat bug? Holy shit! So after a fairly brief negotiation, I came to an agreement with the folks over at Frederator that in exchange for me promoting Bravest Warriors at the end of Aster Movie 7, they would cover the costs of getting Sam Lavanino, the voice of Catbug, to record lines for Aston Movie 7, which was extremely exciting. Hello, my name is Sam Lavanino. I'm a voice actor, and I did the voice of the muffin in the muffin song. Sam was eight years old at the time and very much a child, but he still already had a lot of experience in the world of voice acting, coming from a family of performers and being active pretty much since birth. At the age of 18 months old, he was on the cover of Time magazine as a baby model, not, he, he hadn't won a Nobel Peace Prize or anything. I don't know, actually, I haven't read the article. Maybe he did. How old were you when you did your first voice acting job? Do you even know? I, I was five because I, I know that because I think it was my second or like third audition as Catbug, which was my first voice acting job. Wow. Um, they did this like little interview thing, and it, it's it's kind of a, a famous line, I guess you could say, uh, where I sit on the couch and they're like, there's a camera pointing at me, 
and I say, I'm gonna be six tomorrow. I'm gonna be six tomorrow. And I'm like laying on the couch and it's like, I remember that was like one of my first auditions. So it hasn't been when I was five. So that would have been 2011. However, there was a couple problems. One, Bravest Warriors was between seasons and they weren't gonna set up the studio just to record some lines with Sam for Asta of Movie 7. And two, Sam lives in California and I live in London. There is a fair few thousand miles between us, and this was going to make recording very difficult. And that is where we introduce Ed Scudder and Zach Keller, creators of the webtoon Dick Figures. I've been to their studio in Los Angeles just a year prior to record some cameo lines for them, so I knew that they had a setup, they had a recording studio, and that they were probably there. So I emailed and asked, hey, can I have an eight-year-old come to your office and scream about wanting to die? And they said yes because they were very nice guys. And very quickly a date was set and it was showtime. Now if we wanted to record Sam in Ed and Zach's studio, it had to be a weekday. However, if it were a weekday, Sam had school, so we had to record after school. But another problem with him being in California and me being in London was an eight hour time difference. So at 2 a.m. on the morning of the 22nd of October 2013, I had to call Sam's mum very tired and very nervous to direct him over the phone. And it was also a very expensive phone bill. Do you remember like how you found out about the job, like how you were told about that? For the muffin specifically, I don't know if I really remember. It was a little bit different in terms of, you know, I go into like a recording booth and it's kind of more- um, Professional? Uh, professional, <laughs> yeah, yeah, professional, <laughs> sure. I do remember like going into that warehouse booth and doing those lines and calling you. And yeah, that was um, the, w the only part I really remember. I don't remember anything happened before. So the way we recorded was I was on the phone to Sam's mom. I would give her direction that she would pass on to Sam in the recording booth and we would go back and forth. And I had just about three to five lines that I wanted them to say, you know, do you have room for a muffin? Have you had a muffin today? I just want to die, somebody kill me. It was just a case of feeding her lines and him screaming them and me making suggestions and throwing extra lines in and going back and forth. And it went on for about 20 minutes and it was very adorable, but also extremely stressful because I was really, really nervous, honestly. This was a very high stakes situation. There was a lot riding on this and it was weird. It was very weird and strange and exciting and terrifying. It's hard to explain. At one point, Sam's mum left me on the phone with him in the recording booth and I had no idea what to say. He was eight and he had all the power. I'm sorry that this is insane. I know. <laughs> it's this is very new for me as well, by the way. <laughs> this is, I've never directed someone over the phone before. It's fine. Sam's a pro. So, I mean, yeah, so like obviously, yeah, I was talking to your mom and I would, because I was like having to relay these like horrible lines through her a lot of the time. Like, that was really great. Can you make him say, I want to die? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I, I don't think I really, you know, found it strange at the time. I was just, you know, at that point, I was just, you know, saying lines and doing them, not really thinking much of it. Um, <laughs> but I can imagine, uh, especially on your end, it might've been a little bit uncomfortable to kind of, um, should I even be telling this, you know, yeah. seven year old kid to say these lines? Is like, that, does like, he even have a concept of mortality right now? I don't know, <laughs> but he, he, he'll, yeah. he'll learn one. So with the lines delivered and the audio fully recorded, I said, thank you and goodbye to Sam, his mum and Ed and Zach. They send the audio over and we made Astaf Movie 7, the way we make all of the Astaf movies. I edited the audio, Ben, animated it, Todd made a song, it came out, and it was fine. Hey Joey, do you want to eat me? No thanks Mr Muffin. But I want to die! The Mr Muffin was a strange triplet gag because unlike all of the other ones, he didn't really have a definitive catchphrase, he was more just a concept, like here is a cute muffin that wants to die, here's that joke three times. That meant that there wasn't much for an audience to really latch onto. There was no particular catchphrase for people to repeat. Putting it onto t-shirts for merchandise was actually kind of difficult. We didn't know what people's favorite thing was. So we tried, want to eat me and I want to die. And it was kind of a tricky one, but you know, the video came out, people liked it. I was very happy. I was very excited to have worked with Sam and that was that. Wait, no. So we jump forward a year to 2014 and I'm working on Astaf Movie 8. And while I'm working on that, I remember Sam's recordings. You know, I 
own these now, and there were some things that we didn't use, particularly this one little sample of him going, It's Muffin Time! Which was an alternate introductory line. I thought I'd put it into Ast of Movie 8 as well. It was harmless and easy. It wasn't really a self-contained joke, but people knew the character by now, and, you know, a callback is fun. A callback is easy, and the video comes out, and people are happy to see him again, but they're even happier to see this funny skateboarding cow character that has a much more succinct catchphrase, which is a lot easier to put on t-shirts. After I put this video out, I get a message from my friend Joel, who is also a YouTuber by the name of Rumi. My name is Joel, I run a channel called Rumi Official, and I make music and music commentary stuff. Daily videos, because I'm productive, as opposed to, uh, What's what's his name? Scott Scott Tom. Yeah, what happened, man? You used to be uh, you know semi-productive like me. I'd been a fan of Joel for years after I'd seen him do a collaboration with some of my other favorite YouTubers, the Gregory Brothers. So when he said, "Hey, can I do a remix song of Aston Movie 8? I said, "Absolutely, that's awesome. I love your stuff. Hey, you know what? You can sell it on iTunes. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm just excited that you want to do something creative with my thingy." So he did. I think I spent about two weeks full time working on this remix. I was like using different techniques to extrapolate the uh, actual vocal of the muffin from there was a background noise thing. I could have probably just given you the roles, but yeah. Whenever I was doing big collaborations with YouTubers bigger than me, and I think this is something that all YouTubers can learn from, is that you don't bother <laughs> the busy person. So a few weeks after Ast of Movie 8 is released, out comes Joel's Ast of Movie 8 remix. Hey, what time is it? It's muffin time! It's muffin time! Uh, actually it's 12 30 on iTunes, it's on Spotify, everything's great. Until a couple hours later when I get a very distressing phone call. Now this isn't a direct quote, but the basic sentiment was, what the fuck have you done? And this was coming from the folks over at Frederator that had helped set up the initial recording session with Sam. Sam, who now had a very upset agent, because turns out I didn't own those audio recordings. I had licensed those audio recordings, and to use him again in Ast of Movie 8 meant having to re-license those recordings. He is a real actor, he is entitled to royalties. This was not something I was aware of. But no worries, innocent mistake made by an amateur filmmaker. I agree to pay the licensing fees, and Frederator actually goes halvesies on it, because they're just nice guys to be honest. But while taking care of that payment, I also brought up Joel's song, just to make sure that that was fine. It was essentially a fan-made remix. He can release that. I have the right to let him sell that, right? No! God, no. I really did not. In fact, to sell a song with those recordings was something like three or four times more than the licensing of Ast of Movie 8 itself. So I uploaded the video, and almost immediately, I get a message from Tom. Uh, so about <laughs> about your song. I don't own the rights to the voice and you can't have it on Spotify and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> just, <laughs> and I just spent like, I think a little bit over two weeks working on this song. And that was a big part of kind of like reclaiming that time and kind of money I had spent on that was to, to get a few sales of that song. But you know, it's fine because the song didn't like do well or anything, right? Like, <laughs> so I've now learned two things. One, if I ever want to use Mr. Muffin again, I have to relicense it, so I'm probably just not going to do that. And two, if I ever want to make a song with him, it's going to be a lot more expensive, so I'm probably just not going to do that either. Well, I don't do it for two years at least. So the year is now 2016, and I'm looking back on all the songs I've done with Todd Bryanton over the years. I Like Trains in 2011, Mind Turtle in 2012, Do The Flop in 2014, and I'm thinking, eh, maybe we're due a new song, but which character should we pluck out of the ether and do a song for? The skateboarding cow? Or maybe Mr. Muffin? It would be an expensive job to license it, and Joel has already done a song, but it's not an official song. Maybe it'll be worth it. I don't know. So Todd gets to work. We brainstorm the lyrics, he puts them to some funky instrumentals, he sings the demo, and I'm just not quite feeling it. So he goes back to the drawing board, we write some new lyrics, he records a new demo, and I'm just not quite feeling it again, and again, and again. And before we know it, we've been going back and forth on this song for the best part of a year, and I don't know what's wrong. Am I just a bad director and I can't convey what I want? Every time Todd and I collaborate on a song, it's awesome. I just don't feel like this is enough to blow Joel's It's Muffin Time out of the water. And I don't know if it's going to be 
good enough to justify the expense of licensing Sam's voice, so I just kind of give up. But to give you a brief glimpse into a parallel universe where I didn't suffer from directile dysfunction, I've put together 10 seconds of each of those songs and had Ben animate them, and this is the world that could have been. Sent a muffin to space and it landed in some radioactive waste. The muffin grew a mouth with two cute little eyes, but he couldn't figure out why am I alive? The muffin boy took a look in the mirror and wondered why he felt wrong. He realized he was meant to be a muffin all along. It's muffin time! They're good songs, and I just don't know what was wrong with me. I lost faith in the project and just decided that I wasn't going to do any more Ast of Movie songs. After that, I start to really doubt my place on this platform. It seems like my relevance is observably drying up. My numbers on YouTube are slipping, maybe before too long this whole thing isn't going to be a sustainable career anymore, and that it's time I think about saying goodbye and moving on to something else. Before we move on though, and you knew this was coming, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this week's video, Surfshark VPN. If you've been using the internet, if you've been watching YouTube videos, you've probably heard of a VPN by now. You probably know what they do already. You know, protect your anonymity, your security, enable you to access content that may not be available in your area, be it movies, TV shows, or even information your government doesn't want you to know by making it appear like you are accessing the internet from anywhere you want in the world. So I'm in the UK and there's a lot of American things I can't watch that I would maybe like to. And if I use Surfshark VPN, I can do that. If you sign up using code DARKSQUIDGE, you can get 84% off, that's gone up. And also four months extra for free, that's gone up too. So check them out. Give them a shot. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video, Surfshark. Let's carry on. So then a video drops into my subscription feed, a very unlikely and unexpected collaboration between my friend Echo and some of my favorite YouTubers of all time, the Gregory Brothers, AKA Shmo Yoho, whose videos I have been watching since I was a teenager. They collaborate with people? You can just do that? Hey, I'm Michael from Shmo Yoho and the Gregory Brothers, and I make songs out of people talking uh, in ways that weren't originally intended to be a song. So I messaged Michael Gregory and asked if he'd be interested in songifying Astov movie, and to my surprise, he says yes. And then since we're already there, I show him the raw recordings of Sam Lavanino and say, is there anything you could do with this? I explained to Michael that I needed the song to be catchy. It needed to be a bop, it needed to slap, but most importantly, it needed to convey a very specific message. That I was tired, that I didn't know if I could do this anymore, and that I thought maybe it was time for me to say goodbye and to let this all die. So he got to work. Can you explain the process of how you made the song in terms of, you know, like taking it and how how, how you go about doing that? First, I just rewatched like every Aztec movie. I'm so sorry. Like, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was traumatized. No, I mean, I'd seen them all before, but I was just like, these need to be like, not like distant. Like, you know, I watched this one last week, but I watched this one last year. I was like, they all need to be at the front of my mind as though they were all released like last week. To, to write an appropriate song, you just need to like be kind of saturated with Asif movie in a way that like everything is kind of written as a stream of consciousness. Kind of like when you're watching it, you feel like you're just going through someone's brain. Uh, and you had given me like an amazing help by just finding the original Muffin take, like with no breaks, you could just listen to the whole thing, even the outtakes. Uh, so that, that was invaluable. And so I was like, all right, after focusing on the muffin for like the first verse and the first hook, it needs to go off in like a million different directions. Oh, and also there was a whole pre-course that got cut. Remember how I... it was the whole pre-course about why am I still alive? And oh eventually we were, we were like, this is going to make the song super long. And it's also going to take like 45 seconds to get to the hook. So we cut it. I don't actually, oh my God, that's completely gone from my memory, but we're gonna play it now, that's maybe.
The real message of the video was contained in the part of the song called The Bridge. Here we were going to throw away all the catchiness, all the goofiness, and just straight up show and tell people exactly what I was trying to convey. I was originally actually going to do a short film, a sort of Astor movie where midway through the pace just stops and it tells this same sort of autobiographical story, but I realized, you know what, we can tell all of this in just a few seconds of singing and animation, so that's what we did. Even though letting go feels right, I can't afford to say goodbye. You and I are bound together, especially since cartoons live forever. I brought the receipts of when the lyrics were even more on the nose, like two on the nose, and you said, like verbatim, this is two on the nose. <laughs> I, I want to read you some of these lyrics because they were cracking me up. Oh no. Everyone has to learn to let go unless the special someone is fictional. All right, so this is when, I think this was our first draft of bridge lyrics. I don't know if we actually recorded this version, but we did record like four different quatrains. Quatrain is like yeah. two couplets. Uh, we recorded a lot and sent you the options I think after we got like the way too on the nose ones out of the way, and then you pick the one that we use. Everyone has to die someday. Unless you're fictional, then I'm afraid you're here to stay. Especially if you're in a cash cow franchise, then you can never escape, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> and then we had another one that was like, it's hard to know what to do when a cash cow is a millstone too. <laughs> And that one, then I was like, is Mill, is Millstone too esoteric? Oh my like, God. Yeah, no. like, let's, let's pull it back a little bit. And I like the version we ended up with a lot better. So the song was finished and I was really happy with it. I felt that not only was it fun and bouncy and catchy, but also it conveyed the message I was trying to send. So I passed that over to Ben. I very particularly storyboarded the bridge breakdown part to really drive home what I wanted to say, and we released it. And it did fine. I mean, fine in Astaf movie terms, which is to say it did very well, traditionally speaking, but it, it, it did what I hoped it would do. People liked it. People mostly got it. The people I wanted to get it got it, and it was done. And I felt, I guess, at peace. And then TikTok happened. Now look, I'm not hip, I'm not with it, and you can tell that because I'm using the terms hip and with it unironically, so I didn't really notice the song starting to pick up traction on TikTok. I don't use TikTok, and I don't not use it because it's cringe or whatever, but because I have an addictive personality and an incredibly short attention span, and I don't want to get stuck on that app for the rest of my life. But even I started to notice the Muffin Song popping up in random meme compilation videos, and eventually I started to take notice. Suddenly the views on YouTube, the streams on Spotify, the downloads on iTunes all started to skyrocket. And there was one TikTok that kept cropping up that seemed to be spurring this whole thing. <laughs> Um, at Anna on TikTok. I am a content creator, I'm an actress, and I'm an artist. On TikTok, I post like comedy videos mostly and art videos as well. And I also do video performance and I produce short films on my YouTube channel. I knew of the Muffing song before I found it on TikTok. So I already, I saw it on your channel along with like the other Azdaf movies that you make. Um, and so I already like heard of it before. And on TikTok, I, I don't remember exactly, but I probably saw it on the For You page. I don't remember what video it was that used it, but I just saw it and it reminded me of the video. And I thought it's, it matches my channel aesthetic. It's cute. It's funny. So why not use it? I thought, how should I make it? How can I make it as animated as possible? So um, I decided to use the fisheye lens camera, which basically made the whole video stand out. Um, and yeah, the outfit, I wear outfits like that all the time. So that was nothing different, but also it matched the cupcake aesthetic. <laughs> and the 
things that I did in the video, I kind of just came up with them on the spot. I didn't really plan it or anything. It just kind of whatever, whatever felt right for the song. When I first posted the video, it didn't actually have like an unusually huge reaction from people. It was kind of just like any other video that I was posting. It, after a couple weeks, I think people just started reposting it all over YouTube and all over Instagram. And I kept seeing it everywhere and I was like, all right, well, this is happening now. And yeah, a bunch of people are making compilations and even I think PewDiePie reacted to it at some point in one of his videos. So it just blew up within a couple of weeks. And yeah, I don't, I don't know why. Also, interestingly, TikTok <laughs> took it down for some reason. I don't know why, um, but then they put it back up after I asked them to. <laughs> the reaction was quite mostly negative i'd mm. say i was getting like a ridiculous amount of hate comments which obviously wasn't amazing but i wasn't i wasn't surprised because you know that's what you get when you go viral anyway so yeah it's all right but now funnily enough now people i see people still reposting it and are like oh i missed the 2008 me 2018 memes oh this is such a good time i want this to come back and i'm sitting here like oh well now you love me before yeah. you didn't like me at all before you were like insulting me and stuff and now now you're like all nostalgic and had seemingly created a flagship piece of TikTok cringe and reaction YouTubers, commentary channels, other TikTokers could not help but react to it, to parody it, to listen to the song ironically. But if people were simply listening to the song ironically, just for a meme, it would have faded back into relative obscurity as quickly as it had risen, but it didn't. The views just kept going up and up and up and up and up. So how did you find out about the video going viral and what impact did that have on your life? You know, it sort of blew up towards the end of 2018, early 2019, I'd say. And I think I knew about the song earlier, but um, I didn't realize how much it had blown up until some of my friends, like I, I, I was talking to some of my friends and they were saying like to me, oh, you're like a, you're, you're like a meme now, you know? You, you're just like this this voice of this this muffin song that you can hear, you, it's like it's it's being played everywhere on TikTok and like everywhere. And it's just kind of, I, I didn't really realize until then. And even once I figured out, it was kind of strange because, um, you know, you don't really realize uh, the kind of uh, application that some of your voices can have sometimes. And um, especially since like, I, I didn't have TikTok. I didn't. I wasn't really I. Uh, involved in that sort of scene at all, and so um, even like when, when I wasn't even interacting with it, it was just kind of weird. And I, I heard about people all over, like you know, hear, listening to the song and singing to the song, and you know, the video got millions of views, and it's just kind of you know surreal, uh, a little bit strange. People wouldn't really realize until either I told them or they like they Googled me or something, and so you know. I kind of like, you know, at, at school, uh, you know, people were like playing the song everywhere, but like, you know, I, I wouldn't tell people and um, if they wanted to find out, they could. And so, you know, and they'd be like, Sam, uh, you're, you're the voice of the Muffin song. And I'm like, uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I might be the voice of the Muffin song. So now would be a good time to do that, like big YouTube plug thing. Uh, so, you know, just like. Yep. Yep. So All right. go for it. Go nuts. I will go nuts. Everybody watching right now, subscribe to Sam Lavanino on YouTube. S-A-M-L-A-V-A-G-N-I-N-O. Type that into your search bar. Subscribe. Watch my videos. I actually have a video on uh, some other parts of my history as the muffin. So, guys, you got to watch that. All right. I have some other videos coming out soon. And uh, everybody, stay tuned for that. And subscribe. Like my videos. Comment. View. You're right. already a pro. You've, you've, you've got it down. <laughs> the song even managed to go viral on TikTok twice. I baked you a pie. different parts of the song became memes in their own right and people were flooding to the video, to Spotify, to iTunes, from these sources. And before we knew it, we had a gold record. Could you kind of just like explain how going gold works? Gold traditionally meant selling half a million singles in the US. It's, it's a different number for every country kind of according to the population. And this all started to change in the 2000s and 2010s when people were like in the RIAA, 
who, who does gold and platinum, they were like, wait a minute, people don't buy stuff anymore. So that's a silly metric because all the success is, oh, Rihanna got, you know, a billion YouTube views and she sold a lot too, but it's mostly YouTube views. So they changed the metric so that 150 streams equals one sale. So you have to get a lot of streams, but you kind of combine those. So let's say if I got 100,000 sales of a song, the other 400,000 sales has to be equaled in those views. Does that make sense? Yeah. And platinum, of course, is twice that. So platinum is a million sales or the equivalent. And diamond is is like only enormous songs do that. I think that's uh, something crazy like 10 million or something. Muffin Song is well on its way to going platinum. Yeah, I mean, it's already more than a third of the way there, I'd say. So it'll happen within the next... Um, year or two, I guess. If it goes platinum, can we update the artwork on the on the record? Uh, yeah. The, my, one of my biggest regrets is not is not like being more, uh, my biggest regrets. One of, the, one of the things I regret obviously is not being more um, like picky because it's like this like little JPEG still from the video. And I'm like, man, that's framed in a gold record now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it's it. like classic, classic YouTube thinking where we're all thinking about like that day and like, quick, make a thumb. Yeah, that's so yeah. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, make something custom or whatever you want. It could be be a picture of you just laying on a, a pile of gold records. And because the song was doing so explosively well, the gospel of Mr. Muffin was spreading so far and wide across the internet. I mean, it had become the most viewed piece of Aster Movie Media ever. We went ahead and renamed the Aster Movie card game we were already working on called Random to Muffin Time with the muffin front and center, and we once again relicensed Sam's voice for the announcement video, using up the last little dregs of audio we had from him, including him literally talking to me on the phone, and him getting confused over a line. I like to show Anthony. And then the game went and raised over a million pounds on Kickstarter, and I can quite confidently say that that probably wouldn't have happened quite like that had it not been for the incredible and unexpected re-success of the Muffin Song. And then all of a sudden, it's another year later, our card game is out. The video is still raising in views over 200 million and the record is on its way to going platinum and I'm still here, still able to do this job. This job that I love, this job that exhausts me, this job that I will fully admit that I no longer understand. I thought I was done being surprised by YouTube, by being an online content creator. If this is the last surprise, this job has for me, it was a big one, nonetheless. And that, my friends, is the story of the muffin that saved my life, that preserved my livelihood and enabled this fat fuck of a phoenix to rise from the ashes at least one more time. I think uh, I owe him a retirement. So thank you, Mr. Muffin. And thank you everyone who helped me with this video. They are linked in the description. And of course, thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Don't forget 84% off and four months extra for free if you use code DARKSQUIDGE. I will now bid you adieu and see you for the next thing because you better believe there's gonna be something new because I'm still here. Thanks for watching. Tom Scott out.